Banyak mak mayat kena. Tengok perayaan awe. Bukoropan memalangi utian di tiar nauko. Ngarak kota andi yang ngarak tuangan. Bisa. Tiar nak kuna ngomong ngomong memalang kalutan gig ngor muka ngor. Ngarak ngoli bikin belian tuangan. Ngarak tiar alam kiri. So I would just would like to thank you to Indy of Kumai uh, organizing and, and giving me a, an opportunity to speak here today. Thank you. Your bookmark, uh, welcome to Yolngu country. Here you are on our ground and feel our hospitality and learn about our culture. My name is Yingi Agoyula. I am a Lea Dalingmir, man of the Jamarpingo clan. This is my Yappa Karaura. She is a Lea Gaomir woman. We want to share to you about education. Education is critical for our future. It is critical for our survival in the modern world and it is critical for the survival of our culture. We see the world, we know the world, we feel the world through a Yolngo way. And our children are Yolngo. We have our own science, astronomy, medicine, maths. We have kinship systems that are at the center of Yolngo culture. We have our own law. We have our own languages. For our children to succeed, they need to have a unique education program, an education program that reflects who we are and allows our children to come to Western education on a Yolngu pathway. For a long time now, we have been robbed of our fair education our children have been robbed of a real education. Not by teachers, most of whom are trying, trying their best and want, to, want our kids to succeed. As we just saw some young here talking about education and trying their best, and so is everybody else. But by the system, I see the current education system is failing our children because it fails to close the gap by bringing two cultures and languages together. Our communities and our children cannot see the relevance of school when it does not relate to our world, our Yulmo world. Many schools are working very hard to achieve these goals, but they have not been well supported and are often undermined. This is the problem. In order, to, order for Aboriginal students to be successful, the government and the department have to share their power or hand it over. Currently, the power concerning our children's education does not rest with Yolngu people. It is out of our hands. Now the current government policy is about community-led schools. Mangmak, but we want to see real UL change. I don't mean through a few community consultations. I mean handing over authority to the Aboriginal nations so that we can appoint our teachers and school leaders. <coughs> we can appoint strong ESL teachers. We can decide the direction of our curriculum, both Western and Yolngu. We can revitalize Yolngu teacher training and we can revitalize home and education. Our schools should be filled with Yolngu educators. 
your more leaders and elders, your more knowledge, and our schools can have your more pathway to Western education. But the past 20 years has, has seen very serious neglect of local capacity development. Prior to this, our community saw local teachers training, graduating and working in schools. These graduates were greatly supported by Balanda teachers who understood that for young more education, for young more children to learn there, they must have young more and Balanda teachers working together. What we want to see is a return to local teacher education programs. The loss of these programs has seen the loss of graduate teachers across our communities. And as a young teachers retire, we may soon see schools without any young teachers. This is a crisis. You see, school is failing because the system has been about trying to assimilate us. We want our children to have Western education, but not over the top of their Yolngu identity. It has to come hand in hand together. We must use one as the pathway to the other. We want to see compromise in this system. We want to see the system change and flex to accommodate our children, to create their success, rather than our children be plucked like a, a water lily from a billabong and placed in a reef where they cannot grow. We are Yolngo people see our skins, feel our connection to country, experience our culture and law. I hear people saying, children are spending too much time at ceremonies and this affects school attendance. But what school are we talking about? These ceremonies are their education. This is where they are learning the knowledge of Yolngo education. Traditionally, our education came from our elders as we spent our day by day, so days side by side with our families, hunting on country, being taught the science of environmental protection, the song lines of our country, the bush fruits, medicinal projects, our connection to nature and each other. But now, right from birth, we have changed this system. We have been challenged into a Western system that separates our elders from the children. There are government programs like FEFT, families as first teachers. In these, these programs, young mothers might be without the oversight of their elders, the Maris, the Momos, who are in Yolmo culture are the first teachers. They are teaching, they are teaching the mothers. When FAPT has have these elders there, it is strong. The mothers are guided by the elders and the right clan languages and they're there for each child. They must start with their own language. Then our children go to school and their parents are encouraged to work and they and their elders may go to work or stay at home in a traditional way. 
This has been happening for a long time, and we Yolngo can see the world, and we know the now in this modern world that our children need a Western education. But to bring Western education, we must have a two-way approach, Yolngo culture and Balanda culture running side by side so that children are not caught between two worlds. They must embarrass, embrace, sorry, they must be embraced by both worlds. And the only way to do this is to fill the, fill the school with Yolngo educators who develop Yolngo teaching methods side by side with Balanda teacher teaching methods. Our teachers provide the bridge from the known to the unknown. And until the education system fills the with the schools with Yolmo, who are the bridges, who run the school and, and work together with Balanda, our children cannot succeed. This must be a unique pathway, and we should celebrate diversity and be proud. But we are running out of time. The Minister for Education as the hardest job in the government, of the government, because education is so important. I know she wants to build a pathway for Yolngo teaching training, teacher training rather, like we had 20 years ago. That fills our schools with local team teachers. This could be the greatest achievement of, the, of this government for remote communities. I congratulate the minister for turning her attention to this crisis. My Yapa is here to, today to share her story. She is the last trained Yolngo teacher working at Shepherdson College on Elko Island. She graduated in the 1980s with many, Yol many, many other Yolngo teachers. I thank you for being here today and sharing her story. Thank you.